Okay, video five of making this uh, logo open. And in this video, we're going to take a look at using a SVG to build a frame around our cloned cones. So let's get started. So now we're ready to make that shield shape. And I used Inkscape to do that, so I'll tab over to that. You can Google Inkscape and uh, find its free software that works kind of like Adobe Illustrator. And in here, I just made a... Uh, a path for this shield shape. I mean, just to go through that really quickly, I just took a rectangle, dragged that out, and you get to adjust how rounded the corners are here, and uh, go ahead and convert that object to a path, and then with the pointer tool, double click, and now we've got all the different segments. Select the segment at the bottom, add a point, and that gave us a point in the middle, and then we'll just drag, delete, and drag, and delete, and, you know, you know be a little more intentional about this, but you can see how, you know, adjust this and, and you end up with the shield shape. So uh, that's how I got the shape itself. I'll just delete that now. And I exported this as uh, two different files. One was a SVG file, and that is going to be used to create the frame. And also I exported a PNG. And those two files are going to be what we use to uh, create the shield shape in Unreal Engine. So I exported those from here using the export. Okay. Uh, one little point. Let's go back here and import them. So right click and import. Um, here is my downloads folder where I saved them. Um, they initially both exported with the name shield. So shield PNG and shield SVG. Unreal doesn't like two different files, even if they're the same file type, to have the same name. So uh, I went ahead and just edited this file name. So it was shield.png and shield.svg. So I'm going to shift select both of these. And can I shift select? There we go. And open. And there we go. So now we have both of those in our project. Save all as usual. And the first thing I want to do is use this texture of the shield to... Um, have the dazzling only happen in the area that's uh, this path, right? So if I go to my cloner, uh, because we are using the grid uh, version of this in terms of layout, I have a constraint control. It's really only available in the grid mode. You know, there's lots of different modes to these, um, but grid lets you use a constraint. And in this case, I'm going to use a texture and then I need to select the texture. So I'm gonna drag and drop this in. And I need to invert this, so invert that constraint. And so now I have uh, my little um, shape of a shield. And so I can uh, you know, alt click to uh, get into position here. And I think uh, what I can do is use my count. Let's try this. If I change this to 40, there we go. So now we've got nice little narrow uh, shield shape. Maybe we make this 39. We've got a little, little bit extra going on here. So I'm just trying to see if I can uh, reduce that. I guess I can't. 37. Looks like we have a little dangling out there. Uh, and that's, that's okay. We can deal with that. We're going to cover that up by creating a frame object with our SVG. So let's get that going. Um, we'll drag this SVG out into our scene and it's really small, but it's in there. So, um, let's make it a little more visible. Let's go ahead and make sure our cloner is positioned at zero, zero, zero. Wonderful. And our shield, let's get that to zero, zero, zero. And I will scale this up a bit. Let's make it five and frame it up. Yeah, it's really tiny down there. So let's R scale this thing up. There we go. So now we can see the 3D model here of the shield and we can extrude that a bit more, right? So I'm gonna um, make sure that I'm setting out this extrude type to mirrored so we get a front and a back. And we're only 0.5 right now. So let's do one and uh, that looks pretty nice. And we can, um, let's give it a nice material. So I will go into my automotive materials and materials and exterior, and we will do metal. There we go, metal. Let's get a nice bright reflective metal here. 
metal frosted. Hmm. All right. Uh, this right here is the component that is the shape, right? So if I have this selected, there's no material available, but inside this actor is the fill rect. And that is where I can put my material and that makes that nice and glossy. Wonderful. Okay. So I will rotate this into position. And nice 90 degrees there and R and let's just expand this up. And what I'm trying to do here is just frame out the bedazzling so that we can cover up the edges. All right. So there we go. Um, now I need, I want to inset this. So what I need is a, a hole in our object. So let's go back to where our SVG is and uh, bring out another one. And again, we'll set that to zero, 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 and we'll scale that up to five and we'll scale that up much larger. It doesn't matter the material because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our modifiers in our operation stack to use this as a way of cutting a hole into the surface of the original chrome uh, shield. So uh, let's just get this position. So E to rotate, we'll lay it down 90 degrees and spin it 90 degrees. And let's see if I can hide my cloner. There we go. And R to uh, scale this up. And there we go. All right. And let's, uh, let's give this a little bit more depth. So I think we extruded to one before and that ought to be enough. And what I'm going to do with this is W kind of get a little bit of overlap. So this is kind of inset into the previous shield, right? So we get a nice little frame look here. And now I want this one to subtract from this one, right? So this is my shield two. This is the original shield. So I'll select the original shield and go to operator stack, add a modifier. And that modifier is going to be a Boolean. And by default, this is a target and it's channel zero. So this way um, you can have as many targets as you like and each can have its own channel and each can have different things that are subtracting, adding and intersecting with it. And so in that next step, I will go ahead to my shield two, which is the inner object. I'll add a modifier to that. Again, it's Boolean. And this time we're going to subtract. And again, with the channel being zero, I've now created an inset into this overall object. To keep these things together, I'm going to make sure I drag and drop the uh, second shield in the outliner to be underneath the first. So wherever the first one goes, the second one goes as well. So let's bring back our cloner and well, it doesn't quite fit. Uh, I think I can expand this right now. Uh, select the cloner. We've got 37 X and uh, looks like a 50 in the Y. Let's try uh, 40. Not quite filling it up, 42. Uh, almost there. I could cheat this by just expanding my spacing in the X a little bit. So now we, we're not poking through uh, a little bit there, left and right. Let's knock this down to 71. I might be able to cheat this a little bit by taking our shield and moving it a little to the left. There. It's in here, so let's go back. 270 on our cloner, maybe 70.5. And there, now I think we're all inside the shield. And so, so that's good. And so, yeah, there we go. That's, that's uh, looking pretty cool. So let's uh, put all of this together into a single object. Uh, one of the other cool things that we have with our um, motion design is a null actor. So I can select all of this and click on the null actor. And actually, I think I don't want to do that yet. Let's, let's try something else. I'm a little worried about the positioning. So I didn't want all that to get parented. So we drop in the null actor. Let's do zero, zero, zero. Now let's go ahead and drag this in and drag the cloner in. And that means that the null actor, E, uh, can stand this whole thing up at uh, 90 degrees. All right, so now we are doing uh, some good stuff. We're starting to actually get our 
a little animation together. So uh, let me just F2 rename this null actor to uh, shield stuff. Okay. Um, one of the things I did want to do is have an effector on this so that we can flip all of these little bedazzles so that uh, we reveal the, the lit side. So I'll select the cloner and use spawn linked effector. And let's make it really big. Um, where's my effector? It is here. Let's make sure it's inside this shield. I'll start at zero, zero, zero. And uh, we can zero out its rotations as well. We'll keep it as a sphere. Let's keep it linear for right now. Let's make it really big. So like 2000. There we go. Now it's as big as the shield. And let's make the uh, inner radius uh, 1900 because actually I want the outer radius to be bigger, 3000. Let's try that. Okay. And now uh, the mode the default is going to be applying whatever we put in here. So if I rotate by 180 degrees in one of these axes, it flips our um, bedazzles. And so uh, we're kind of still seeing some of the edges of some of those. So I might need to take my shield and bring it a little closer. So we oh, undo. Let's move in the whole shield. I want to take this shield, bring that up. There we go. We want that bedazzling embedded in there. There we go. And so if I select my effector now and move it around, we get this kind of effect where um, oh, now we can't see the things. So let's move this shield back again. We want to try and split the difference here where when the lights are on, let's, huh, I know we can cheat this. Here's the problem. Our offset is a hundred here. Let's set this offset to zero. So we're actually lifting the uh, little cones up and, you know, towards the camera here. Um, that's, that was what was going on there. Okay. So now we just flip them over. So pretty nice. So that's going to be how we end up getting that effect. And, uh, for now I'm just going to set that aside and because the effector is in with the shield, it'll move. I'm actually not going to be animating the shield at all. So let's do a save all while we're at it. And that should be enough for this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll take a look at building a set around our shield. Until next time, have fun.